Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're talking about what happened to Ted Ginn Jr. and how he used his speed and hard work to reach and play in the NFL for 14 seasons. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell. It helps me out a lot. Ted Ginn Jr. was born on April 12, 1985, where he would grow up and play football for his father at Glenville High School in Cleveland, Ohio. In high school, Ginn was very versatile and he would play defensive back, quarterback, and wide receiver. Ginn was eventually selected as the 2003 USA Today Defensive Player of the Year. As a senior in high school, Ginn would make 8 interceptions, returning 5 of those for touchdowns. One of these included a state record 102 yard touchdown, while another one went for a 98 yard touchdown. So it was seen very early in his career that he was extremely talented and excelled in the open field with the football in his hands. He had great vision and insane speed. He actually became the national champion in the 110 meter hurdles as a junior and would win it again as a senior the following year. He also won the state title for 200 meters. So yeah, Ginn was insanely fast and colleges all over the country were in awe of his speed and talent. Ohio State University was actually recruiting him for track and field as the Ohio State University track coach Russ Rogers thought Ginn would eventually go to the 2008 Summer Olympics. However, Ginn put his track career on hold so he could focus on football. After his award-filled high school career, Ginn was rated as the number one cornerback in the entire nation as a five-star recruit. He considered Ohio State, Miami, Michigan, and many others, but ultimately he decided on Ohio State. And as a freshman at Ohio State in 2004, Ginn actually played as a wide receiver and finished his freshman season with 25 receptions for 359 yards and two touchdowns. He also had 113 yards rushing with two more touchdowns and, of course, he led the entire nation with 25.6 yards per punt return, including four of those going for touchdowns which broke the Big Ten Conference record. As a sophomore in 2005, Ginn would finish with 51 receptions for 803 yards and four touchdowns while returning 18 kickoffs and 25 punts for a total of 782 return yards. Going into his junior season, Ginn was actually a preseason candidate for the Heisman Trophy and the Belitnikoff Award. He he would finish as a second team All-American with 59 receptions for 781 yards and 9 touchdowns. He did this while also having 706 return yards with 2 more touchdowns. In the 2007 National Championship game, he did this. Joey Ehas bangs it away and this is Ted Ginn Jr. Out across the 20, slips a couple of tackles and Ginn down the sideline will race to the end zone. What a start for Ohio. Yeah, he returned the opening kickoff and the national championship for a touchdown. However, and this is so unfortunate, and I can still remember it like it was yesterday, during the celebration after the touchdown, a teammate slid into him and caused a foot injury, which made Gim miss the entire rest of the game, where the Buckeyes would eventually lose 42-14 to the Gators. So yeah, it was a disappointing ending to his career, but after his junior year ended, Ginn was seen as one of the most electrifying players in college and NFL scouts were excited to see him enter the draft. After being told he would be a first round pick, that's exactly what Ginn would do and he declared for the 2007 NFL Draft. Finished his college career with 125 receptions for 1,943 yards and 15 touchdowns. He also had 213 rushing yards, but of course, mostly known for his insane returns, he finished with 38 kickoffs for 1,012 yards and 900 yards on 64 punt returns, the second highest in Ohio State history. Overall, he gained 4,000 yards and 26 touchdowns in college, and he was a three-time All-American in college and was rated by many as the top wide receiver playmaker in the upcoming draft. Ginn apparently also ran a 4-2-8-40 time after his leg was healed from that injury and Ginn said that his actual personal best was a 4-2-2 40-yard dash. That's absolutely crazy speed and eventually the Miami Dolphins would select Ginn in the 2007 NFL Draft with the 9th overall pick. This selection was actually booed by Dolphins fans as they really wanted a quarterback. Miami Dolphin great Jason Taylor said he was in shock when the Dolphins selected Ginn. Many wanted them to draft quarterback Brady Quinn, but that wouldn't have really been a great pick as we all know in hindsight, so luckily they didn't do that, but Ginn said himself he was completely shocked that they took him over Brady Quinn. In his rookie season in 2007, Ginn would make 34 receptions for 420 yards and 2 touchdowns, but as expected, he would return a punt for a touchdown as well. Although he didn't have amazing numbers, he was voted as the third alternate for the Pro Bowl as a kick returner. 
In his second season, he actually had punt return duties removed from him. He would finish the season with his highest reception season of 56 receptions for 790 yards and 2 touchdowns. He also had 657 yards on kick returns. So after 2 seasons, for being the 9th overall pick, expectations were gigantic of course being a top 10 pick, but fans were left disappointed overall. In his 3rd year in 2009, Ginn was criticized for having big drops in games and would finish the season with just 38 receptions and 1 touchdown. But he did have an amazing season on kick returns with 1,296 yards and 2 touchdowns touchdowns averaging 24.9 yards per kickoff return. However, after being the ninth overall pick like we said, the organization felt Ginn wasn't living up to his potential and had a very high 9.3% drop percentage over his first three years. He was traded prior to the 2010 season to the San Francisco 49ers for a 5th round pick which would eventually turn into Nolan Carroll, a defensive back. This is basically the point in Ginn's career where he was more of a return focused player versus a wide receiver. Over the next 3 seasons from 2010 to 2012, Ginn would average just 11 receptions for 128 yards and just 1 touchdown overall over those seasons. However, he shined as a returner as he would average 11.96 yards per punt return with 2 touchdowns and he also averaged 23.9 yards per kickoff return with one touchdown of 102 yards. He played fantastic for the 49ers as a return man but barely played or contributed at a wide receiver level and after the 2012 season, Ginn would sign a one year deal with the Carolina Panthers where he would have one of his best seasons of his career. Playing with quarterback Cam Newton, Ginn would have 36 receptions for 556 yards and 5 touchdowns. He also averaged 12.2 yards per punt return. After this one season however, he would sign a three year deal with the Arizona Cardinals heading into the 2014 season. So yes, if you haven't noticed yet, Ginn has jumped around a lot in his career, not all by his choice, it's just kind of what happened. but. For the 2014 season with Arizona, his numbers dropped off significantly and again, as a wide receiver, he only had 14 receptions for 190 yards. But he did have a good season returning as he would have 10.7 yards on punt returns and one touchdown. Ted Ginn's contract was actually non-guaranteed so even though he signed a 3 year deal, after a lackluster season, the Cardinals would release Ginn. So yet another team gave up on him so what now? Well, he would return to where he had one of his best seasons, the Carolina Panthers. Going into the 2015 season with the Carolina Panthers. Panthers, he would catch 44 receptions for 739 yards and 10 touchdowns. Yes, 10 touchdowns for Ginn. He had an opportunity and he showed how he could be a very good option at wide receiver in the right situation and he impressed. He didn't return kickoffs this year however, but he did some punt returning averaging 10.3 yards per punt return. He even helped the Panthers reach the Super Bowl, but the Panthers eventually lost to the Denver Broncos in that Super Bowl 24-10. Following season in 2016, Ginn would have a great year at wide receiver catching 54 receptions for 752 yards and 4 touchdowns. Again, he showed he could be a quality option as a wide receiver, however this would be his last Last season really contributing as a returner. He only had 202 yards on punt returns and 391 yards on kickoffs. After this season, Ginn would again switch teams, joining division rival New Orleans Saints. He would catch 53 receptions for 787 yards and 4 touchdowns. He helped the Saints get to the playoffs where, in the wildcard round versus his former team, the Carolina Panthers, Ginn would have 4 receptions for 115 yards and a touchdown. The Saints would lose the following game, however, against the Minnesota Vikings. 2018 saw Ginn get injured however unfortunately and he played just 5 games. He would return in 2019 and would catch 30 passes for 421 yards and 2 more touchdowns. After this, his 3 year contract with the Saints was over. He would sign a 1 year deal going into the 2020 season with the Chicago Bears. And he briefly returned punts for 2 weeks and he finished the season with 3 receptions for 40 yards and just 24 yards on punt returns. So yeah, after this it was up in the air of what he would do when he come back for the upcoming 2021 season. But on July 16th of this year, 2021, he announced his retirement from the NFL after 14 seasons. In 193 games, Ginn had 412 receptions for 5,742 yards and 33 touchdowns. He also had 4 punts and 3 kickoffs for touchdowns. So that brings us to now. How good of a career did Ginn actually have? He was super electric in high school and college and honestly had a decent NFL career as well. Many have said over the years that he was terrible, dropped a lot of passes, didn't live up to expectations, but I don't think he should have been drafted 9th overall in the first place. I mean, that followed him around his career and set really unrealistic expectations. He had a great career and really had some impressive moments, but did he live up to those expectations? Well, if we're being honest, for the number 9 overall pick, no, he didn't. 
but did he have a good career? I mean, he didn't last in the NFL for 14 years for no reason. I wish he could have been in better situations over his career. I mean, we saw in Carolina, given the right opportunities, he actually was a solid option as a wide receiver. Overall, he was an electric player, and he was so fun to watch and had the ability to break free anytime. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite Ted Ginn Jr. moment was of his entire career. He was always so fun to watch, and again, thank you for entertaining so many people, Ted. Thank you so much for everyone for watching. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have made it this far, you might as well, and it's free to do. Also hit that notification bell to get notified each time I post new videos, and let me know who you want me to talk about next. As always, everyone, I'll see you in the next one.